first storyteller. Uh, tonight's going to be a bit of a raunchy night. I hope you guys are buckled up and ready for that. Uh, our first storyteller is going to tell about the time that she um, attempted to have carnal relations for the first time. So please help me welcome Andy Matrell. <laughs> So I want to tell you the story of Goldilocks and the three dildos. <laughs> Which I realize sounds like the most traumatizing Disney porn spoof ever, but I promise no Disney characters get penetrated in the telling of this story. <laughs> so I grew up in the Midwest, very Christian, no sex before marriage. Ooh. Marriage being something that happens to everyone, I was assured I would not have to wait long. <laughs> Story, we're going to need to fast forward quite a bit of time, so join me, won't you, as we find Goldilocks. Um, that's me. The title made sense when I had blonde hair, but just go with it. Okay. Uh, the newly awakened bisexual atheist living in Los Angeles. <laughs> Next door to Leif Garrett. A few of you remember, some were too young. Leif Garrett was basically the Justin Bieber of the 70s. Oh, yeah. Drugs and eventually reality television rehab, which is the cycle of the celebrity life. So I'm in my early 20s and extremely virginal. And I'm the worst kind of virgin. I'm a virgin without a cause. I, I didn't have any reason not to have sex. I just kind of felt like when the moment was right and the person was right, I would know. And it just hadn't felt right yet. My one friend tried with great annoyance to get me to just get it over with already. She felt like I was making it out to be a much bigger deal than it was, and that by the time I did meet someone I wanted to have a serious relationship with, that it might get in the way or they'd be freaked out by it. But none of that really sat right with me. I, maybe it was my old-fashioned upbringing, but I just kind of felt like your first time should be with someone you feel totally comfortable with. Because as I had heard over and over growing up, your first time can be very painful and awkward. Uh, you're exposed, literally. The possibility for things to go wrong is very, very high. <laughs> and yet, as often as I had considered all the ways it might go wrong, I had not seriously considered the possibility that I may one day inadvertently cock block myself. <laughs> show and there's this guy on stage totally adorable in that geeky creative kind of way so after the show I asked my friend about him and it turns out he's single so I go home and <laughs> on Facebook and send him a message he replies instantly we start chatting and he asks me on a date I know <laughs> Because not only am I a virgin, I have barely been on a date. Uh, it doesn't happen, but it did. We went on a gosh darn date, I tell you what. <laughs> so I think what happened on that date was, um, I was so overwhelmed by finally being out on a date with someone I actually liked that I couldn't keep all of that excitement and sexual energy inside of my body. I, mean, I think I told him maybe 20 times over the course of that dinner how attractive I found him to be. You're so pretty. Like, you are so pretty. Like, by the third time, he was like, I know. He was clearly on a first date. Well, I was clearly on my seventh Malibu rum type beverage with my fingers knuckle deep in his hair, practicing saying his last name is mine, just to see how it sounds. <laughs> it was every terrible cliche in the book, and I'm embarrassed about it to this day. But you have to realize, it was 23 years at this point. 23 years, I mean, granted, several of those are broken diapers, but still, 23 years of sexual frustration and societal pressure bearing down on me, all waiting for this one person with whom I felt these special feelings, and here he was, and I was fucking it up! <laughs> as raw as my nerves were, 
and as loose as my tongue was in letting out slip every thought in my mind, I was still sane enough to realize that he wasn't looking back at me with the same crazed expression, and that terrified me. Eventually, we walk back to my apartment. We do the linger at the door, and I am praying, metaphorically speaking, obviously there is no God, <laughs> that despite my foolish behavior, he kisses me, and he does. <laughs> and it is good, oh mom, is it good? And then he asks if he can come inside. Yes, please. But still, with my, uh, you know, old-fashioned rules on how to behave as a lady born into my very cells. <laughs> my inner goddess, <clears throat> leave him one and more, lady. <laughs> my inner grandma says, he won't buy the cow if he gets the milk for free, see? <laughs> I said, don't call me a cow, grandma. It gives me body image issues. <laughs> So with that, I inform the boy that we will not be going all the way uh, tonight. <laughs> Very proud of myself, I lead the boy into the boudoir. I put on a Bon Iver record and we make out. <laughs> and it is good. Oh, it's <laughs> And then he leaves. And nothing. Days, weeks, nothing. <laughs> My body starts to itch for that high again. I initiate a conversation, and he's not explicitly saying that he's not interested, but that much can be implied. I don't give up. My 24th birthday arrives. I'm out at dinner with a friend. We're drinking wine, and I'm telling her about my love woes. And before I know it, she swipes my phone and begins a textual conversation with this boy that crescendos from casual to aggressive to full-blown fight to me inviting myself over to his apartment on my birthday to hang out with him while he writes a play. Doesn't that sound fun? <laughs> sick to my stomach as I approach his door. I can't believe I'm about to throw myself at a man who is clearly not interested in me. I don't do this. I have pride and self-respect. <laughs> but, fuck it, I think. I'm 24, and this is the year that it is going to happen, so fuck my pride and fuck my self-respect, and most of all, for the love of God, please fuck me! <laughs>
a week later, I got home and there was a note on my door. It read, I have your package, Leif. <laughs> a dick-shaped box with dick exclamation points stamped all over it. <laughs> After several minutes of erratic breathing, I calm myself down enough to knock on his door. He hands me a very nondescript box, of course. No idea the irony of his note. I have your package. <laughs> Growing up, we're taught that you go to college, you fall in love, you get married, you work, you have kids, you retire, and you die. But really, only one of those things is guaranteed to happen to you. You are going to die. <laughs> that felt a little harsh. I didn't mean that personally, but you are going to die. <laughs> We're not all going to get married. We're not all going to have kids. We're not all going to be able to retire. And some of those will be choices, and some won't. That's life but I've learned to stop feeling bad and comparing myself against this arbitrary timeline that society tries to push on us about how you're supposed to live your life. The only voice that matters is the one inside of you. Yeah. And following that is the best way to live a life with as few regrets as possible. And a surefire way to ending up with a story so uniquely you as Goldilocks and the Three Dildos. Thank you. Yeah.